all. So, I've been out and about today, being that it's Saturday, and it's really the only time I can get to do stuff, particularly YouTube videos. Um, so, when I got back in the house, dropped through the letterbox, literally, was this little parcel. Now, if I'm correct, the only thing I'm, that I'm expecting is this. This was a, a Daily Mail kind of free gift offer to commemorate World War I from, I think it was about a month ago and now I sent for it, the Repro World War I Brass Christmas team. So, dropped today through the letterbox, quite literally, was this cardboard box, and I'm pretty sure that's what it is. So we'll have a look at what it is. I don't know how many of these Repro boxes have actually been issued, but we'll take a look at it and then we'll compare it we'll spend the greater part of this video looking at the repro christmas box and then near the end of the video we'll compare it to an original one and um, already on the likes of youtube or youtube on the likes of ebay those people that have already received, received these are, have already put them on the likes of ebay um, when these repro daily mail boxes started appearing on ebay they were fetching 30 pound a time and it astonished me that people were willing to pay £30 for the repro, but they weren't willing to spend £20 for an original, because that's what originals were. Um, so the reproduction is similar, but not identical to it. So it comes in a cardboard box, inside a plastic bag, on the back of it, now that's nice to see, on the back of it, you have this decal on the back of it, which says First World War Daily Mail Centenary 2014. Now I thought when I saw pictures of this, that was a removable sticky decal. It isn't. That's actually lithographed onto the back of the tin, so you can't actually remove it. You can scratch it out, but it will always leave a scratch mark. Now that is a really good idea, because this stops people selling them as original items. And my, my kind of problem with this box was that in years to come, 20, 30 years from now, someone would try to sell them as original pieces so when i saw this on the likes of ebay i thought that was a clear decal that would peel off but it isn't it's actually lithographed into the back of the tin so it's not removable tin really nicely designed it's obviously being kind of molded from the top of an original tin because it lacks some of the fine kind of crisp detail the lead opens and functions just like an original lid the tin has round sides to it just like an original tin and without that lithograph detail in the back it could probably fool people in the future especially if you polish it up um, but it is surprisingly in brass a lot of people who saw them when they were in the newspaper thought they were just going to be made in plastic but it is actually brass so we'll dismount the camera, we'll take a look at the Repro Daily Mail team and we'll compare it to an original one side by side. We'll do a side by side comparison later on in the video. So we'll take a look at this one. So just bear with me a second. So, uh, just to recap, this is the kind of the blurb this was the daily mail saturday july the 12th 2014 now you've all seen this before this is what kind of got me to send for it a free roll christmas box just like the one given to every british soldier to get the box you have to collect 14 unique numbers from the newspaper and send a check for two pound fifty so that was in july so now at the end of september this is what i've got through the post it's not a bad reproduction You have all the details there. It's been very, very badly marked there. That, that's supposed to say Belgium. But it says Isium. That's been very badly marked up there because on, on an original that does say Belgium. And as we go around We've got really, really badly defined. That's supposed to be a bayonet scabbard, which is badly defined. 
on the Daily Mail one. Imperium Britannicum, that's not bad. On this side, it's a very, very poor representation of an 07 pattern bayonet. On this side, it says Japan. Down here, it says Russia. You have the trophy of arms. Again, there's no details to the flagpole tops. Down here, it says Montenegro. Well, it's supposed to say Montenegro, but it actually says Moni Negro. Down here, badly defined ship. Christmas 1914, which is on the repro, it's set nearer the bottom. And again, very badly defined battleship there. On this side, you have Serbia. On this side, you have France. And again, badly defined trophies to this side. Now, interestingly, on this side, you have two X's, which capture the original one. And on this side, there's no two X's, which is a feature of the original. As for the detail in the middle, very, very badly defined princess's portrait. You have the oak leaves surrounding, and you have the M cipher around it. You've got the recess that goes around it, just like the original one, and inside, rather at the back, you have this three hinged section on the bottom you have the lithograph first world war daily mail centenary 2014 and on the inside you have this recessed dish detail of the lid which kind of captures the original one and the inside so it's a nice repro but it's not 100 percent accurate now if you compare it to an original one Okay, this is an original one, that's the Daily Mail Repro. Now on the original one, it says Belgium. On the Daily Mail one, it says Isium. On the Daily Mail one, badly defined 07 pattern scabbard. On the original one, crisply designed scabbard. On the Daily Mail one, badly defined 07 bayonet. On the original one, we have a crisply designed bayonet. Other details, on the original one, you have this really nice standards all together with crisp details. On the Daily Mail one, badly defined. And the princess's portrait in the middle on the original one. It's very, very well detailed. On the Daily Mail repro, very poor. Other details on the original, the Christmas 1914, is set down near the bottom, but it's not touching the bottom. On the repro, it's more near the bottom. And the battleship design, crisply designed battleship facing that way, poorly designed battleship, and again on the original, crisply designed battleship with the bows going in that direction, and again, very poorly designed. Now as far as the rest of the tin goes, it's kind of the same depth as you can see that's an original that's the repro it captures all the kind of curvature of the tin and all the sort of recesses and on the back of the original you have this really nice hinge assembly on the daily mail repro you have this three thingy assembly and also i can tell right away that the original one, empty, is considerably heavier 
than the Daily Mail Reaper, or the Daily Mail is fairly lightweight, but it's still brass. And if you open the lid of the Daily Mail Reaper, you see it's got this raised design around it. Open the lid of the original. It's it's a much more thinner raised lip. The Daily Mail Repro is a much more pronounced one, but inside the base of the tin is kind of similar. Ignore that hole. The base of the original tin, the edge is more sharp, but in this kind of health and safety conscious world, the edge of the Daily Mail Repro is kind of turned over. So this, the edge of this tin, if you were, the edge of this comes up to a more or less a sharp edge. The edge of the Daily Mail Repro is actually turned over, like the edge of a German steel helmet, if you see what I mean. It's actually folded over so that it doesn't cut anybody, probably to some modern regulations. So that's the original one. That's the Daily Mail reproduction. And I can tell just by picking up both of them, this one, the original, is considerably heavier than that one. I think the original is probably twice the weight. So that just come today. I'm really pleased to get it as a comparison. Um, you know, well done to the Daily Mail for producing these. I don't know how many were made. It would be nice to know how many were made and how many were actually issued. It doesn't say who made them at all. Um, but it is poorly defined in places. But what I am really pleased about as, as a collector is that the, the Daily Mail logo thing on the back which says first world war daily mail centenary 2014 that's been well thought out that i mean that could have just been a sticker if that had been a sticker people could remove it and in years to come that could be polished up to dull it down it could be flogged as an original one but it is nice to see that that is actually part of the tin it's not a separate item that can be taken off if you see what i mean so that's so that, that that really is a master stroke and well done to the daily mail for putting that as part of the tin rather than a removable item. So that's gonna be uh, really helpful to collectors in the future because obviously the original one, and again, ignore that hole because it's been mounted on a piece of wood. The original one has nothing on the bottom of it, but the Daily Mail one is what it is. So in years to come, people may try to scrape that off, but you'll always know that it is what it is. But again, the princess's portrait on the reproduction daily mail one very badly defined on the original one and there's the other details which i've kind of gone through so that's just dropped through the letterbox literally today the 2014 daily mail newspaper commemorative world war one 1914 christmas tin really pleased to get it um if you haven't been lucky enough to send for one then just go on to the likes of eBay. People are flogging them on eBay, but don't pay a fortune for it. If you're going to pay £30 for a tin, you may as well buy an original one. Okay. So that one there, if you're going to buy it, £10 to £15 for a repro, it is what it is. But do bear in mind, that logo is not removable. It's not a sticker, it's lithographed into the back. So that's a really nice item for this year as part of the World War One centenary. That's an original that's the Daily Mail reproduction. Bye for now.